So welcome, welcome for the last session of the day in our SIHH auditorium and TV studio. We are in for a very exciting session by Mont Blanc talking about the past and the future of high urology as well as welcoming some very special guests. And to lead the session, to tell us what's going to happen, to invite his guests, here's the CEO of Mont Blanc, Nicolas Bareski. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all the watch lovers uh, around the world. And welcome to this Mont Blanc live talk at the Salon International de la Haute Horlogerie 2019. As Mont Blanc CEO, it is both my pleasure and my privilege to be your host as we explore together the latest in the world of Mont Blanc watchmaking. Tonight will not be so much about a product presentation or about a technical uh, a new development at Mont Blanc, but will be more of a conversation to tell you about our watchmaking history, of how we've transformed Mont Blanc into a true watchmaker, on how 161 years of Minerva history is at the origin of everything at Mont Blanc watchmaking. I'm joined right now by Davide Cerato, the managing director of the Mont Blanc Watch Division. As well as a very special co-host that you may be familiar with uh, tonight. And uh, please let me uh, have you, you, Jackman, to join us and have a big uh, and warm welcome Hello. to you. Merci, merci, bonjour. You is not here as our brand ambassador tonight. No. He's not here as a great actor, a oh. talented singer, oh. an amazing dancer. Oh, encore, encore. <laughs> but he's definitely more here as his really true love for watchmaking. Oh. And he's also here because he's been uh, experiencing, witnessing the last five years development at Mont Blanc. You, An expert. You are the expert tonight. World expert. You didn't know that about me, did you? No. No. Uh, merci. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to be here in Geneva at the uh, SIHH. Thank you so much uh, for having us all here. Uh, and we are being joined by, I believe, 150 million people watching via the internet. At least 150 million. At least. It's currently midnight in Australia, so they're all drunk, but welcome. <laughs> Good to have you here. Look, one of my, obviously one of the great perks of being an ambassador for Mont Blanc, and I've been a proud ambassador for five years, is I get to wear some incredible timepieces. But this really is why I signed on five years, was to finally be recognized as a world expert in everything to do with watches. You're going to hear these guys talk. Check your phones during that period. Just wait till I talk. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. Thank you very much. You know, yeah, it's okay. I was about to say that even though I'm so glad that you're participating <laughs> to this live talk, that I was about to say, please don't ask me to return the favor and to be alongside you in your next uh, blockbuster movie. Uh -huh. I don't think I can be to that level of sophistication. It seems you might be fishing there a little bit, <laughs> Nicholas. No, no, no don't maybe worry. Nicholas uh, could be in the next film. I finished playing Wolverine. Someone needs to play Wolverine. Do you have a, is there a dark side in you there? I think there's too much training for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, well, well uh, let me think about it. Maybe by the end of this uh, session, I'll have an idea for you. So, should we start with watches? Let's should we talk. talk watches? Okay. I wanted to ask you about the Minerva. It's 161 years old. What is the significance of the Minerva and what influence has it had uh, on, Blanc, on Mont Blanc? Well, I should say thank you for this question. Ah. It's a very good question. As <laughs> Minerva is at the origin of everything at Mont Blanc. <laughs> I could, of course, talk of the whole history of Minerva, this fascinating history, but I guess it would take the whole session that we have here tonight, and definitely that's not the purpose. Uh, indeed, uh, the Minerva history dates back from, uh, to 1858, when the company was founded by Charles Yvon Robert, and I stop here the whole story and uh, that was specialized uh, in gold uh, pocket watches. The manufacturer progressively gained international recognition for its precision timepieces, becoming a leading specialist in the fabrication 
of professional watches and timepieces, stopwatches, high-quality instruments for measuring brief intervals of time with remarkable precision. As a matter of fact, Minerva watches were referenced in the field of horology, innovation, with a lot of patents that have been received throughout the years, creating a very unique heritage. But let's come to the important part of the story. Twelve years ago, twelve years ago, when Richemont acquired uh, Villaret and Minerva and, uh, and decided to, uh, to, to basically uh, give it, integrate it into Mont Blanc as a center of excellence for watchmaking. When we started the first amazing collection of Villaret with very special high watchmaking pieces and limited edition. But in fact, the real story started a little bit later, in 2015, when we decided to create one unique watchmaking entity, integrating Minerva completely into Mont Blanc, into Le Locle, huh? and creating uh, this uh, amazing synergy between the two, uh, uh, the two uh, manufacturers. This integration became the pillar of the Mont Blanc of fine watchmaking, and really helped us from that time to redesign all the product lines, be it Time Walker, Star Legacy, Heritage, or 1858, getting all the inspiration from the Minerva and reaching this amazing uh, collection that we have today uh, at the SI Church. I think it's kind of incredible that you've been able to preserve the traditions, uh, the heritage through the Minerva, as well as being able to allow a whole new generation of, of watchmakers through Mont Blanc. I wanted to ask you about the vision of integration between the Minerva and Mont Blanc. <clears throat> Indeed, you know, if you see today, our four main collections, um, they are all completely inspired uh, by Minerva. And, uh, and it is the source of all, uh, of all Mont Blanc uh, collections. Mm. And at the end, uh, Minerva has shaped the identities, uh, the technical excellence, uh, and the style expression of new product lines of Mont Blanc timepieces. Yeah. Minerva has become Mont Blanc, and today Mont Blanc is Minerva, there's no question about it. And that's why that gives such a powerful global watchmaking entity. We are delivering uh, definitely the best of these uh, entities. Uh, and I, I have to say that uh, definitely this is the story and this is the ethos at Mont Blanc. Whenever we enter, as you all know, we are not just watchmaking. Uh, whenever we enter into a category, we enter the category as an expert. We mm. are the specialist. Everybody knows that we are the writing instrument, uh, mm. kind of the owner of the category. Uh, a lot of people will know that we are the leather manufacturer with our Pelleteria in, in Florence. But definitely, we are also the watch specialist uh, in yeah. Switzerland. And we can definitely be seen as a true watchmaker yeah. that brings us back to the theme of tonight, Mont Blanc, a true watchmaker. It's, uh, it's amazing how you brought these things two together. Clearly, one reflects the other and have influenced the other to create something absolutely unique. I'm actually wearing, and I think we have an option to go in for a close-up. So I'm going to put on my Zoolander face. <laughs> This is the eight, I can't do that seriously. This is the 1858 Geosphere. Um, by the way, it's only people at home get to see the close-up. Um, it's uh, the green khaki uh, with the bronze. And the beautiful thing about the bronze, what I love about it is all Mont Blanc pieces, no matter what Mont Blanc piece you buy, is designed to be with you as a life companion. But the bronze, of course, weathers, as bronze does, in a completely unique, unique way for every single piece. So, uh, oh yeah, you can zoom in there, that's good. So, um, I actually got to see this piece first when I was shooting the commercial uh, for uh, this year's collection. And we shot in Colorado, and I was given this piece and I fell in love with it immediately. It is, um, this entire collection is based on mountaineering, it is based on a sense of the outdoors, a sense of adventure, and in fact, it's dedicated to the Seven Summits um, mountaineering. Uh, ah yes, here's a commercial. Uh, the Seven Summits Mountaineering uh, Challenge, which I, I guess many of you know, which is uh, climbing the seven uh, summits on the cro across the seven continents around the world. Very few people have done it. It is a symbol. It is really the holy grail of mountaineering. And in fact, in the design on this, the design elements, you can see reference to that Seven Summits Challenge. Um, we shot in Colorado. We shot outdoors, which I absolutely love. Uh, we shot in a place where you had no cell phone reception, which I absolutely love. 
We got to put everything down and to truly be outside. We were at 4,000 meters. In fact, at one point we got in a helicopter, we went up to 5,000 meters. And I can tell you from experience, if you're wondering, is it durable? Can it actually be great and operate well in rough conditions as well as look great? The answer is yes, and it did way better than I did at high altitude. So uh, I highly, highly recommend it. But it's, uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Telluride in Colorado, I highly recommend it. And uh, I think this collection, the 1858 collection, you know, which is symbolized by this watch, I think you'll absolutely love. Well, that's a hell of an adventure. A big applause. And now he's not anymore an actor. Not anymore a brand ambassador, but a big explorator. Uh, and I did, when I arrived on set, I, we went up to the mountain, I said, where's the stunt double? <laughs> and Nicholas said, I thought you're Wolverine, you do? And I said, I don't know it for real, man, that's all pretend. <laughs> but anyway, I did it all myself. Thank you for the effort. <laughs> I'm not sure everyone is aspiring to go to uh, up to 4,000 meters, uh, but if you go to our booth, you'll see that uh, this spirit of mountaineering uh, this spirit of reconnecting to nature is definitely a very important theme at Mont Blanc. But let's get back to, our, again, our tonight talk and, uh, and why Mont Blanc is such a true watchmaker. And let's have Davide Cerato as the expert of how Minerva has been central to the evolution of Mont Blanc watchers. Can you tell us a bit more about how the legend that is Minerva is today of the, on the origin of all new technical innovations and design inspirations? Indeed, uh, the 1858 uh, product line, which is one of the uh, novelties that we are presenting this year at uh, CHH, uh, it's really seminal uh, for Mont Blanc watchmaking. Uh, we are taking inspiration from Minerva military pieces from the 20s and the 30s, uh, beautiful vintage designs and really the most collectible uh, Minerva pieces. These watches were not only very precise at that time, but also uh, very readable, uh, very robust, very uh, real companions. Uh, we have taken inspiration for the redesign of the 1858 from the beautiful uh, vintage codes of those watches, uh, uh, the luminous uh, uh, indexes, Arabic indexes, the cathedral ends, uh, dome uh, uh, dials, and uh, sapphire crystal and really rugged uh, cases. And we have been trendsetters and still trendsetting in the use of uh, original colors. We have been one of the first to use the green, uh, and we continue to leverage this beautiful color this year with an association of uh, military khaki green and bronze, as you said. The iconic timepiece of this uh, seminal product line is the 1858 Geosphere, a very strong, unique, uh, world timer complication with a very easy to read uh, two main time zone and two discs that start turning to give you northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere uh, time zones. Very unique. It has a bronze case, uh, it has a, a military khaki green dial, degradé, really giving a lot of depth to it, and it has a very unique NATO strap that we do in east of France uh, in a company that is doing since five generations uh, NATO strap with traditional weaving machines. Really, really unique and really expressing perfectly the spirit of the great outdoor. So it's really interesting that Mont Blanc is going into this direction, the outdoors, exploration. Why this direction and why now? Uh, the spirit of exploration is uh, really at the center of uh, uh, what we are doing with 1858 and is very much rooted uh, into Mont Blanc and uh, being uh, our maison uh, uh, called with the name of the Mont Blanc, which is the symbol of achievement. Uh, outdoor exploration and, and this uh, uh, draw to nature is also something that is a global trend. Uh, everyone is trying more and more to reconnect with nature is exactly what we are, we are proposing right now. Um, and uh, it's uh, exactly the expression of the spirit of the 1858 product line. Yeah, I, I relate to that. I'm sure everyone in this room uh, and watching relates to that. We have so many devices. We live busy lives. I live in New York City. If I walk around in New York City, most people are looking down when they walk. Uh, sometimes we need to recalibrate, get out, get into the outdoors, going sh shooting this in Telluride or just a few months with my son, uh, I went to the outback of Australia for a week. Uh, we went camping and we slept under the stars and it is 
that kind of feeling and spirit. It, it not only invigorates me, uh, gets my creative juices flowing, puts everything into perspective, it somehow relaxes me. I find there's a serenity to it and puts everything into perspective. Um, I think it's something we all crave um, and something that the whole world needs very much. Um, what is the next, after the 1858 collection you were describing, what's the next step? for Minerva and Mont Blanc. What's the new direction? The next step is uh, a brand new collection product line that we are presenting this year at the uh, CHH that we call the Heritage. Uh, it encapsulates the very strong spirit uh, of uh, uh, Minerva chronographs from the 40s and the 50s uh, with beautiful uh, design details, uh, really vintage. Uh, we are taking inspiration from those uh, uh, watches uh, with uh, uh, very strong designs and uh, mm. we uh, present into this big uh, wide uh, product line many different uh, uh, complication from the automatic uh, to day day to GMT to a very strong uh, uh, chronograph mono pusher that's the one that I'm, uh, I'm wearing tonight uh, a new perpetual caliber uh, calendar new caliber that we presented after three years of development and uh, a beautiful exquisite pulsograph with a Minerva movement. The pulsograph? Pulse, is that the, the human pulse? Is that? Definitely. Ah. Uh, it's a chronograph mono pusher that has a, an, aff an affichage, a display for the heart rate and allows uh, uh, to calculate the heart rate. It's oh. called by collectors the doctor's watch because oh. the countryside doctors were checking the wrist of their patients for Can the Can I get the rate. camera on my watch, please? <laughs> I think my, first test. my personal trainer is going to make me wear this watch, I think. I'm <laughs> exactly. not sure if I'm going to like it. <laughs> exactly. And again, inside, a beautiful Minerva chronograph mono pusher with high-end finishing, completely handmade, and with this beautiful 13 lines caliber. So, we are also speaking, we decided to, uh, to position this product line to speak to uh, a very sophisticated crowd, uh, men that are really able of trending, uh, of setting trends and that have a sartorial flair, the kind of uh, people that were in uh, Florence for the PT Womo show just, uh, just last week. Uh, we are really working on colors once again and here we, we champion for one of the original dial from Minerva, beautiful pink salmon, uh, exquisite and vintage and then mm. once again we are setting a new trend. So you took uh, inspiration from the military uh, watches from the 20s and 30s and then other uh, eras, 40s and 50s. Were there any other particular eras that you drew inspiration from? Um, yes, yes, definitely. Also the, the beginning of, uh, of the 20th century. Um, but if I can just add one thing on, uh, on uh, heritage, uh, we are presenting here also uh, uh, a very nice development. We have been uh, uh, presenting chronograph mono pusher with Minerva movements for uh, for some years now, three years. This has become really the signature of Mont Blanc uh, uh, high-end watchmaking. We are able today of presenting inside Heritage uh, a chronograph mono pusher at the accessible price point, thanks to a special collaboration with Celita, 4,700 euros, which is uh, under off uh, uh, as of today and with beautiful uh, uh, details coming from the old watches. A nice one is uh, on the minute dial. We have at three, six, and nine minutes uh, a longer line. Ah. And it was due to the time when you cannot believe, but still we were calling in cabins with telephones when we had to put coins. And uh, after three minutes, if you wanted to say, darling, and I really, I really love you, you needed <laughs> to put another coin. I remember those times. Exactly. I remember not having three minutes though. I think <laughs> when I was ringing my girlfriend when I was 18, I had 10 seconds with the, remember the beep, 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 beep. So anyway, I love, oh, <laughs> a lot of that. And by the way, you're very generous, Davide. If anyone was, could pick up what happened when he said, do you mind if I add one more point? That was because I cut in on him before and said my question way too early. And I would not have been nearly as nice if an actor cut in on one of my monologues. So <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I give you much credit. No problem. <laughs> and the last, uh, last line that we are focusing on, and it really gets back to the very, very early pocket watches and wrist watches from the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th, is the Star Legacy line. It encapsulates 21 years of star lines inside Mont Blanc. 
uh, with very strong uh, vintage design, with this beautiful guilloche uh, um, dial that is called uh, Exploding Star, once again, the symbol of the, of the Mont Blanc Maison, and uh, with very beautiful uh, movements inside. Yeah. So as you said, it's not new, but you're bringing, there, there are new iterations, are there, of the collection? Absolutely. We are coming with new colors, we are coming with new materials, and we are coming with very nice high-end pieces that you are all more than welcome to come but and discover. as I said, uh, tonight is not just about product presentation, it's more about why the story of Mont Blanc, why the story of a true watchmaker. And I think you understand that whenever we talk of a collection, be it Star Legacy, the Time Walker, or the Heritage, or the 1858, it's always related to uh, Minerva, always related to the spirit of mountaineering, the spirit of racing, the spirit of elegance, of sophistication, of classicism, but also this technical expertise for Minerva. And all these combine uh, with Mont Blanc, and all this as a unique Mont Blanc, Minerva, Minerva, Mont Blanc, is a, a clear demonstration of Mont Blanc being the true watchmaker. Yeah. Um, I... Please. I now mean, you can interrupt me. You're allowed I, to. No, no, am I interrupting? You are not. Oh. <laughs> All these collections, 1858, the Star Legacy, the Heritage, the Time Walker, uh, I've watched over the last five years and been amazed at the sense of family uh, within Mont Blanc, the sense of uh, true dedication to this heritage, what the Minerva represents, quality, craftsmanship, dedication, and longevity. And always, like anything creative, doesn't matter how long you've been around, it doesn't matter what you create, you must always be innovating, you must always be looking, yes, one eye in the past, but one eye in the future. And that's exactly what, to me, uh, Mont Blanc represents and why I'm so excited with what's happening with the watchmaking. And on some level, seems like a short period of time, but in many ways, there's almost mm. two centuries worth of, of heritage. So, uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be an imposter on this stage. No, no, uh, no, no. I've made a career out of being an imposter, so <laughs> I enjoy it clearly, but thank you, Davide. Thank, thank you, you. Nicholas. Mo most importantly, to everyone here and to everyone watching, thank you so much. Uh, yes, and you in particular, yes, hello. <laughs> she was waving, none of else where you were waving, so <laughs> particularly to you, thank you. Uh, and uh, we look for, hope you enjoy the, uh, the fair. We hope, look forward to seeing you again soon. I'm I have getting the to say, up. you, yeah as a watch ambassador, a brand ambassador, a lover of Mont Blanc oui. for those past few years, you have also become a true watch expert. Ah. So you're going to get solo next year, I can tell solo. you that. Okay, well, <laughs> considering that, Nicolas, then maybe it's time for you to take over and do a film. All right, I'm going to keep my job as a CEO. That's it. Okay. Thank you all of you again for participating and uh, yes. listening Merci. tonight. Thanks a lot. Merci. Uh. And we'll now open up the floor for questions, if any question. George? George. George? George. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, George Guerrero from JSBG Blog. I have a question. Uh, we all know Mont Blanc for the writing instruments, for the wonderful letter goods you do in your paleteria and uh, now for the watchmaking. According to you, what are the, the bullet points, the key points that, turn, that are turning uh, Mont Blanc into a, a true watchmaker? Oh, thank you for this question. I, I suggest we start from the beginning of this uh, presentation and <laughs> re-explain everything. <laughs> but I'll try to make it in a very short while, you know. Again, uh, the whole strategy is about Minerva. The whole inspiration of our collection is from Minerva narratives history of 161 years. The technical expertise uh, goes into the high-end segment of every product line, but then you have true watchmaking through the different segments, with true, like the beautiful, again, uh, geosphere that uh, you is wearing on his wrist, uh, but also at the enterprise segment of Mont Blanc. So definitely, all this architecture of the collection of the product lines uh, is creating a true watchmaker, and hopefully, you are now all convinced here yeah, in that room and uh, at the end uh, of your TV screen, uh, mm -hmm. iPad, uh, and uh, or mobile phone. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, uh, sure. Microphone. Thank you. Can you 
a very nice talk. Um, I'm John Buse uh, from Hodinkee. Um, this question is for Davide. Um, I'm interested to know, the, you know, the 1858 collection covers what I would consider a fairly wide spectrum uh, in terms of the finishing quality, um, uh, price, and perceived value. Um, so I wonder, you know, when you're figuring out your messaging, how do you try to maintain a consistent messaging when you're talking to, you know, the very highest end collector all the way down to someone who may just be starting out? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Definitely, we have a very special way of doing watchmaking at Mont Blanc. Uh, and in effect, every product line is structured into three main levels. We have what we call in the industrial standards up to 5,000 euros. 5 to 25, uh, we have what we call the manufacture, uh, own uh, in-house uh, manufacturing movement, but done with an industrial approach. And uh, over 25, we have the Minerva pieces, completely unmade and finished, number limited. With these pieces, we are clearly uh, calling uh, watch collectors, and you have, we are seeing more and more in the last three years uh, uh, them coming into Mont Blanc. Uh, but we are also speaking to them with the manufactured pieces. The perfect example is the Geosphere, which is a, 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 a universal appealing watch. The message is only one, uh, mountain exploration, outdoor adventure is the same for all 1858. It speaks to uh, the bottom to the, to the top, is something that is really global. Uh, and uh, overall, we are really implementing our identity and our design and our desirability through the design. L thank you also to thank to the link with, the, with Minerva. Bruno, we have time for our last question. Alive. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Josh Shanks. I'm with Watchinista. Um, I have a question. We'll start with Nicholas. Uh, so the 1858 collection obviously pays tribute to my nervous heritage. But my question is, is if you could travel back to 1858, what's the first thing you would do? That has to be for you, that question, no? Oh, 1858. <laughs> You're the creative guy here. I would not go to the dentist, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I put a... I know a few things I'd invest in. <laughs> um, I would probably go to, I'm a, obviously a theater lover, that's my main love. I would probably go to London. And I would go uh, in the, oh, so 19, in the 19th century, I'd go to the Globe Theater to all those great theaters and see, see it in, in, its, uh, in its heyday. That's probably what I'd do. And if I may answer in a very short sentence, if I were in 1858, I would definitely travel to London to watch the show of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thank merci. you. Thank, Thank you. Grazie, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. Nicola, merci. merci. Thank you, everybody. This was a very interesting and uh, Inspiring session. Uh, we're going to close the live stream now. So goodbye to everybody who's been watching online. And we're going to start tomorrow again at 9 a.m. Geneva time uh, with a new program of uh, stars and watches and guests. So see you tomorrow. Thank you. Goodbye. Give it to me. Thank you, and uh, fantastic. Enjoy the rest of the evening and uh, the show. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Absolument. Merci. OK. Uh, pas trop de soucis pour la musique, parce qu'en réalité, uh, merci que tu as...